Hey everybody, welcome back. I am the Gerbil, and in today's video, we're taking on Smuggler's Run 2 with the Hut Cartel Jabba lead. Of course, you can only run this one if you have Jabba, and I have to say, this event is rather challenging. Now, I just unlocked Jabba a few days ago. He is Relic 6. I do not have his ultimate, and I only had five Zetas when I started this evening's battles. I did not manage to do well. My first attempt, I failed miserably, but with some remodding and some adjustments to strategy, I did manage to get through it. So here's what I have. 561 speed on Jabba, 318 speed on Skiffguard Lando, 330 speed on Chrysanthemum. Um, talk about that more in a moment. And then 312 speed on Bosch Leia with Boba Fett being the slowest at 296, but also modded for speed and potency. All right, if anything here was interesting or helpful, please give me that like and subscribe. Moving on though, shall we? So the strategy is pretty simple. If you have the ultimate, this is way easier. If you do not have the ultimate, you're gonna rely a lot on detonators. Um, when I started this first run or three, I opened with Crime Lord because it should inflict speed down on all the enemies, but I did not succeed at that. I never landed that, like ever, no matter how much potency I tried. So I switched to Crumb's Revenge because it throws out thermal detonators on all enemies, and when they go boom, all of your allies gain 2% stacking mastery. That's not a lot, but it also turns out the vast majority of your offensive power comes from the thermal detonators. They're gonna do way more damage than most of you guys just punch for. Jabba's basic, it's also kind of important to remember that it is essentially a healing ability. It provides the weakest member 30% protection while also giving everybody protection up 30% and some additional heals out there. Now, I'm not going to go into the kits in too much depth here because honestly, I'm still learning them. I did manage to beat this event twice tonight. The second time I ran through it, I did apply Jabba's sixth Zeta, which was on his uh, Crumb's Revenge move, and I also took him up to Relic 7. Upon doing that, the event was way, way easier to achieve. Because without that that Zeta on Crumb's Revenge, you're just not landing enough Boombas and the thermal detonators just don't go pop as much, which means you're not getting that stacking mastery. Uh, and again, the, the thermal detonators are, are really your key to success. You want to try to land those as often as possible, as much as you can. Um, I failed to record my second run through here, but in phase three, you go up against Director Krennic with two Death Troopers, and I think they're two Shore Troopers, I can't remember, but the Death Troopers will annihilate you quickly if you don't take care of them. They, they bypass, uh, or something is allowing them to bypass your protection, and they just hit your health, and your team gets disintegrated rapidly. But in my second run through here, I was able to open up phase three with Crumb's Revenge. I think that's the name of the, the ability. It's the one where little uh, Crumb throws the, the thermal detonator up. But I opened with that and then immediately was able to have uh, Bush Leia go following up with her second that detonates all the thermal detonators and applies more. And in that two person combo, and there might have been some more action in between, I can't recall, but in that combo, I was able to kill both of the Death Troopers instantly before they got a turn. And that was remarkable and a bit of luck, but I think you can manage to do it. Notice how hard this Shore Trooper is here uh, to take down. He's kind of the lone guy. And while I'm mostly just hammering away on basics, that is on purpose, because I want to make sure that each time I enter a new phase, phase two and the phase three, I enter with all of your special abilities uh, ready to go, right? I, I'm trying to eliminate all those cooldowns. So that's just one of the most helpful tips I could give is like at the end of the phase when you've got one dude left, just apply all your basics. So here we go. Phase two, General Veers and uh, the Shore Trooper seem to be the biggest threat. See, the Shore Trooper puts all that protection up on everybody and that's super duper annoying. I did try using Greedo instead of uh, Boba Fett and I had a lot of success with that in phases one and two because he throws out more thermal detonators 
and his, one of his, his second special removes 100% turn meter, stuns, stuns the target, and grants himself the turn meter he drained. And then it's not actually 100%, it's based on his potency, I think. And then uh, it also removes the bonus protection. So you can just bypass that and or invalidate it, whatever, remove it, and then attack straight into them. But um, as soon as I got to direct to Kranix level twice, they just destroyed me. I don't. I don't know what the big thing was, but uh, Greedo was great until phase three, and then he's not so great. So here, as I said, the, the bigger threats I think are range trooper and general veers. But I've also noticed that the scout troopers in, in phases one and two, they die much much easier. They seem to be much weaker, more. Uh, a lot less health pool. Stormtrooper seems to have literally four, maybe five or six million health. Uh, it's it's incredible how much health he has. Um, I, I remember a couple times I would hit him for 50, 60,000 damage and it only seemed to remove like five or percent or less of his health bar. It's it's so monotonous. So if you can, save him for last. Remember, I think that, that Jabba the Hutt actually uh, ignores taunt. Um, I don't remember if any of the other Boba Fett can ignore taunt. Uh, um, I believe I gotta look that up in his kit. But Jabba ignores taunt, um, so that's good to know. But again, you're going to win mostly with Boombas, thermal detonators. Here we go. See, put those on there, um, and then everything just comes together. Uh, let's see here. Skiffguard Lando. You, you probably want to, as much as possible, use Skiffguard Lando to pass turn off to Chrysanthemum. See, when Chrysanthemum dies the first time, as you know, he'll come back, he, he revives, um, and I'm so new to this, this team, I don't know how many times, if it's limited to one per event or per battle or what, but he will come back, but you don't want him to die because, of course, if he dies and dies again, you will lose at that point pretty much. So you want to keep him alive as much as possible. So you use Jabba the Hutt to restore protection as much as possible. But Skiffguard can also pass turn to him. So if he, this is why I modded him for high speed, because I actually want him to take as many turns as possible so that he can use his second special ability as often as possible, which recovers uh, health and protection. And then of course, his second special applies that really, really debilitating debuff, uh, which I forget the name of it. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna go look that up right now. Let's see here. I wanna get this one right and I wanna tell you which, what that kit does. Which of course you could look it up yourself. I know, we're all smart, we're all literate here, right? Or else we wouldn't be able to play this game. So yeah, the, the first special, the Ferocious Fusillade, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, deals damage, gain defense up, taunt, and then it recovers 10% health and protection. Uh, if the ally and the leader slot though is Hut Cartel, he gains protection up, 50%. Now remember that protection up is based on your health, so that it's not based on your protection, so if, if he's gaining protection up a lot, and he does through both Jabba and himself, then you probably actually want to mod him for uh, health and not protection mods. Um, he also then recovers 5% health and protection for each other Hut Cartel ally. So he's got four other allies, so that comes up to be another 20. So so he, he recovers 30% health and protection and then gains 50% health or protection up and that that's on his second ability which is why I monitored him for speed it's not that um, you know like obviously with more defensive mods he'll endure more hits but I feel that taking more turns between himself and then skiff guard passing turns to him he will be able to reduce that cooldown uh, and survive I think longer uh, I would rather take more turns and heal than just, you know, endure more hits. That's just my strategy. But then Dismember, that's it. Dismember's his second ability. It's got a cooldown of eight, which is another reason I want him taking a lot more turns because it inflicts disarm on the opponent, which reduces their critical damage and offense by 50%. And then whenever that character uses a, a basic, they gain damage over for time for two turns, which is also really, really helpful in taking out your opponents because damage over time, also seems to do more damage than your actual character's attacks will. So here we go, Re phase three. The only time I beat it in re 
recorded it. I really feel bad that I missed it. So you see there, Jab uh, no, Jabba Boba, you know, I just did his little flying AOE there, which should, pl should apply ability block, uh, and it, it didn't land on a single person. The enemy's tenacities are super high. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's really high. So there we go. Look at the, the Death Trooper on the left. He's almost dead, and I have not hit him with any direct weapon yet. It, um, Unless I just miss saw that, but misplayed or something, wasn't paying attention. But yeah, it, you're gonna kill them with your AOE thermal detonators. That's how I've killed the Death Troopers both times tonight. Yeah. So anyway, folks, honestly, I'm still learning these these kits. There's a lot here to to, to understand. Even though I unlocked a lot of these characters a long time ago, I've never paid attention to them. Like I couldn't even begin to tell you honestly, uh, you know what Skiffguard is doing other than passing turns and his his intermittent special ability that that's not always there. The one that has a picture of Bib Fortuna seems to do a lot of damage relative to the others. Um, but yeah, I got to go back and read that. And I will, of course. But getting Jabba the Hutt seems to be uh, pr pretty easy overall. Farming the, the new marquee characters, of course, is tough. And, and the, the drop rates on Bosch are really, really poor. So that's going to be a challenge, I know, for most people. But I think that this is a faction absolutely worth getting because I think all the characters, most of the characters are pretty good. Of course, Gamorrean Guard and Mob Enforcer are not likely to have much use for them, but the faction themselves is pretty solid. They're fun to play. I don't really know what happens. Even just smashing buttons, they're fun to play. Um, but of course, they're gonna be needed strongly for TB3 coming out probably next week on the 12th. Uh, and the rewards on this event alone are fantastic. You get 30 of those attenuators to upgrade or try to reroll your mods, uh, and then you get enough slicing material each victory to take one mod up to six, um, six E or whatever, six A. I don't know. The, from the gold to the shiny gold, right? So, like, if you if you go for Java, even if he's your first GL, you're going to improve the quality of your mods way, way faster than people without Jabba, which is gonna give you a tremendous advantage come GAC time. Um, so like this, these two wins an, alone tonight, I managed to attenuate uh, five mods tonight with the, the, the winnings or four mods. Three of them got speed bonuses. Um, so like Han Solo, I got plus six speed. I was like, yay! And then of course, I managed to upgrade two more god, uh, gods, mods, ah, mods. Anyway, so here we are back to another Shore Trooper, Shore Trooper Stormtroopers, the last ones to stand. They take forever to kill. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm tired, it's late, I need to go to bed. The gerbil is sleepy. And I hope you all out there have a great day. Uh, happy December. <laughs> and uh, I'll see y'all later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.